At this point, I had a couple of choices. Drive an hour to a doctor followed by an outrageous bill, ignore it and deal with the consequences later, or I could get busy trying to get it out before the swelling and the real pain started to set in. As you can see, I chose the DIY route. After all, I figured I would have it out and be back to work before I could even make it to a doctor. And I could not ignore this splinter. I've cut this down to a 10 minute video and did not record sterilizing my tools over a torch. The tools that I needed for this operation were some Revlon scissors, which I became fond of with their high quality and ability to cut the nail relatively easy, a sewing needle, fine point tweezers, and my trusty razor knife, as you can see here. After realizing that I couldn't just grab it with the tweezers or pick it out with the needle, I began trimming the nail down to get better access to the rotten wood. It is hard enough to push tweezers up underneath your fingernail, but your body does not understand and the muscles do not do like you want. I had to reposition and use my body to help push the tweezers deep enough to get a bite on the trespasser. If you find yourself in a similar experience, remember your C's. You're going to want to stay calm, cool, and collected. Stay calm so you can make rational decisions. I could see some people flipping out and just ripping the nail off with some vice grips after a brief discussion with Captain Morgan. While quick and easy, this would be painful for months. Stay cool. I was sweating immediately after seeing what was in me. A cool rag on your neck, some splashes of water, and air conditioning help more than you think and can keep you conscious. Stay collected. Focus on the task at hand and recognize anything that may be of use and use it. While this may seem like a lot of work, it was, but it was well worth the effort. What I'm doing here is, with the razor knife is scraping a groove into my fingernail directly above the splinter. This was not as painful as it may seem. After the groove was deep enough, it was easier to cut the nail with the scissors and a bit more comfortable than just jamming the scissors in and risking the scissors twisting and clamping onto the fingernail. Patience was the key here. I was already in pain and did not want the pain to get any worse. Since this debacle, I have added a sharper needle to my get home bag, I mean my, uh, my first aid bag, that's what we'll call it. If you are lucky enough to have someone by your side in a situation like this, remember to be courteous. While everyone wants to see a train wreck, not many volunteer to help, so be thankful for any assistance you may receive. As you can probably tell, I was a bit discouraged when I discovered the splinter was in E.T. E.T. E. Reese's, Reese's pieces was in pieces, but I knew what I needed to do and trudged along. If you've made it this far into the video and you're one of my subscribers, you might be wondering why I'm posting content like this. Well, it's easy. If you follow me, then you know I like to go out into the wilderness. The further from civilization, the better. And when you get out that far, there may not be a doctor for hours or even days. You need to be prepared and able to 
take care of yourself and those traveling with you. For example, my last trip to Jericho Mountain, we stopped at a wayside waterfall and as we were taking pictures, another young couple started to climb out from the rocks. The young girl tried to spider-man a gap in the rocks and earned herself a strawberry from her ankle to her knee. Well, after I gave them some basic supplies, some water, and some advice, the boyfriend said he was going to add a first aid kit to his trunk. I cannot stress enough how important some basic first aid knowledge is, and the more prepared you are, the better the outcome will be. We spend thousands of dollars on recovery gear, winches, tree savers, kinetic ropes, D-rings, pulleys, tow hooks, and jacks to recover our rigs from a fall. But how many of our rigs have a $5 tourniquet, a quick, a quick clot kit, or even a bottle of aspirin? Not to mention the grit it takes to dig under your fingernail for some treasure that you don't want. So I've scraped the groove all the way from the tip to the cuticle, using the scissors to cut through the final paper thin layer and carefully trying to hook the lumber with the needle to loosen it up a bit. The needle isn't sharp enough to get a bite on the saturated wood, but with a little bit of pressure on both sides of my finger, I notice the gap in my fingernail opens up a little bit. I can get the needle under the splinter and lift it up just enough that I should be able to grab it with the tweezers. I think I sent my assistant back to work too soon. I've got the needle under the splinter. Huh? See if I can do that again. teach the new generation how to take care of themselves. We'll see y'all later. With a little apinol or turpentine the first couple nights, 10 days later, my nail is still ugly, but it feels like nothing ever happened.